Once again, blood is shed on Ukrainian soil. Soldiers and civilians, not only Ukrainians, but also many other nationalities. The lives of Ukrainian Jews were no exception for the Russian invaders. One of these heroes is the Ukrainian soldier Vitaly Barabash, with the call sign Benya. Barabash is a defender of Mariupol at Azovstal, a Ukrainian with Jewish roots. Standing on crutches, shell-shocked, wounded, and holding the Ukrainian flag, he asked Israel for help. My friend will voice my speech on behalf of all Jews and Ukrainians who are with me. The soldier appealed to the Prime Minister of Israel, to the Parliament, to the deputies of the Knesset who were born in Ukraine, to the people of Israel, journalists, synagogues and rabbis. Barabash said, while being wounded, he is writing this appeal while other Jews are protecting every piece of land that the Ukrainian people shared with them. Here in Ukraine's Mariupol, in the ruins left by Azovstal, there are Jews like me, just like you. We all remember how our Ukrainian ancestors suffered from Stalin and how our Jewish ancestors suffered from Hitler. Today we all face a new threat that unites and revives the actions of these two tyrants of the past in the face of Putin. Barabash, just like all defenders of Mariupol, from the Azov Regiment, brigades of the armed forces of Ukraine, the National Guard and Territorial Defense, asked to help Ukraine with the extraction procedure and the withdrawal of the military from the blockade to the territory of a third-party country until the end of the war. The military has no medicine and a minimum of food. The wounded just lie on the ground with gangrene without the possibility of amputation. We need Israel's help in extracting the Mariupol military garrison. We ask you for salvation. You, like no one else, are able to do this. We, like no one else, are pinning our hopes on you. We are waiting for you. We are already writing history. There is no official response from the Israeli government to the appeal of the defender of the Ukrainian Mariupol. Meanwhile, they continue to learn about the deaths of members of the Jewish community who were killed in Mariupol by enemy shelling of the Russian Federation. On May the 9th, Chief Rabbi of Ukraine, Moshe Ruven Asman, wrote about the story of Pyotr Klekvin. There were Russian troops there. Adepts of Kadyrov were on Fontana Street. They shot at every house. On my father's gate it said living people. After the mortar shelling, the first one who was torn to pieces was my father. Fragments hit his head and heart. He was buried on Zemska Street. The chief rabbi of Ukraine appealed to the Jews in Russia, advising them to leave, because according to him, the future fate of the Jews in Russia is difficult to predict. In general, I would like to advise the Jewish community of Russia to quietly leave the country, and many are already doing this. Russia's rhetoric is very dangerous. It is now worse there than in the Soviet Union. I'm not talking about the Stalin years, but it looks similar. The Russian political and military command only confirms the words of the rabbi of Ukraine. An example of this is the anti-Semitic statements of Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov. Later, the Jewish community of Ukraine had to refute accusations of growing propaganda that synagogues in Uman were allegedly used by Ukrainian nationalists. Russia bombed the Jewish cemetery in Glukhiv, Sumer region. No one has forgotten the cruise missile of the Russian Federation flying to Babi Yar, which in the 40s became a mass grave for tens of thousands of Jews shot by the Nazis. I understand the criticism towards Israel. I myself have repeatedly appealed to Israeli television and radio with a request to sell the Iron Dome, to provide Ukraine with funds for the defense of the population. But I also understand Israel. The Russian leadership blackmailed Israel and continues to blackmail. There is Syria, Hezbollah, Iran. Therefore, I cannot blame Israel. But in my opinion, there have been changes in this direction. It seems that Israel began to understand that Ukraine is fighting not only for Ukraine, it is fighting for the entire free world, including Israel. Israel is in no hurry to respond effectively to the abuse of historical memory, the murder of Jews and the bloody war, as well as to respond to calls for help. And while Israel is deciding whether Russia will be forgiven for all this, the killing of people in Ukraine continues. Reported by Mektafan, Yulia Bezborochko, UATV News.